I love sports. This was one of my passions, this bowling league, doing something together and having the same beliefs and not being discriminated or being feared or threatened or being scared. So it's these fingers? Yeah, you have three fingers, so. Not these? I definitely love it. And I have a feeling I'll be taking it to my grave. <laughs> Meet Donald Pinke, president of the Buffalo Historical Bowling League, a bowling league that's paved the way for gay sports in the Buffalo community. But having a space to bowl is about more than just kicking it with your friends. Research shows that playing sports is linked to lower rates of depression and suicide. Sadly, LGBTQ folks are far less likely to participate and can be actively discouraged from taking part. The need for inclusive sports is essential to the LGBTQ community health, and groups like the Buffalo Historical Bowling League are evening the score. I'm Devin Norell, and this is Bray Spaces. Oop. <laughs> Buffalo Historical Bowling League, it started in 1978. I just actually wanted to be with people that had the same belief with me. Kind of being funny, crazy, and not worrying what people think or say. And to find a no judgment zone. Yep. And it's like, but that's the problem. It's like, you'll be gay, it's like you're accepted in that, but they judge you on that, well, you stink at sports. <laughs> and it's like, that's not the whole, it's not the purpose that we want to embrace within our organization here at the Buffalo Star. Why is it called the Buffalo Historical League? And historical was the clue like the Friends of Dorothy, mm. which we actually used. It was a code word. It was a cold word. Like um, back in the 90s when uh, gay men used to wear earrings. Yeah. Okay, I see. But your bowling league um, accepts all yes, people we do. from all walks of life. We have never turned anybody away, and we would never will. We feel that it's wrong to um, exclude when we want to be accepted. I see. Oh. Can I hug you? <laughs> you okay? Mm -hmm. Because we all struggled, <laughs> you know, to be accepted. And um, it's just the right thing to do. <laughs> At Classic Lanes, I bowled with Jeffrey McConnell secretary and treasurer of the Buffalo Historical Bowling League, and Sherry Fawcett, vice president of the league and a straight ally. They okay. definitely taught me a thing or two. Here, mm -hmm. see, there you I see, so my hand has to be turned this way. It should be just like that. Okay. I've been treated badly, I've been ostracized, I've been called names, and I know how that hurts. When I came through here, they wrapped me in love and I felt safe. They saved me. I came here with a broken heart, and they fixed my heart. Counseling didn't do that. They did. I see the, the people who show up at bowling alone, who don't have a team, who don't know anyone here. And, you know, we, we work with, we, we talk to them, we, we welcome them, and we find them a place with other bowlers who they'll be able to connect with. We provide an opportunity for people to be themselves, no matter what their situation is, outside of these bowling lanes. Mm -hmm. um, so if they're not out at work, they can still be brave here. Wow, that's an excellent, never thought about it as a place where you can come out first. Mm -hmm. The Buffalo Historical Bowling League has grown since 1978. They've won two silver medals in the gay games and their largest season had 24 teams. So here we are, more than 40 years later. Have things changed? Well, yes and no. Time Magazine reported that across the US, UK, Australia, Canada, Ireland, and New Zealand, the US ranked the worst for homophobia and discrimination. If this doesn't shock you, you're not alone. One third of US adults use sports as unwelcoming to gay athletes and 80% of people have experienced or witnessed homophobia directly on the field and in the stands. This is a major red flag. I mean, I, I felt like I was a pretty athletic child, but you know, I tried to stick to individual sports because I was kind of concerned about the team aspect and bullying and 
which I think does a disservice. I think there's a lot of people who are LGBT2+, who would have been great basketball, great baseball, great um, football players, but because of their fear of being treated in the locker room, didn't pursue those sports. Around 4 in 10 LGBTQ plus students dodge gym class and the locker room. Some avoid athletic facilities in general. This is due to the fear of retaliation, bullying, and the sense that these spaces are not safe. Among them, non-binary and trans students feel the least at ease. This is a big deal because there's evidence that LGBTQ plus youth who play sports are more likely to feel safer in the classroom, do better in school, have higher self-esteem, and are less likely to have suicidal thoughts. The truth is, we're more likely to play sports as an adult if our childhood experiences with them were positive. I grew up playing basketball, running track, and found a super dope queer skate club in Brooklyn. They don't care if you're gay, straight, or straight or trash. <laughs> if sports have the potential to save lives, is there anything that can be done to help LGBTQ plus youth feel empowered to play? School climate is a key factor. An active gay straight alliance club, supportive coaches and teachers, and a strong anti-bullying policy are a few of the ways we can dunk on homophobia and help make LGBTQ plus youth feel welcome in athletic spaces. It's gonna to be tough. It's an uphill battle and it, it will get better. The world's out there. Life is, can be totally awesome and you can make it. I'm here. <laughs> Proof it, you can make it, yes. Gay sports leagues are becoming more widely accessible throughout the country. You can head to the U.S. Gay Sports Network website to locate leagues near you. They have a database spanning 84 cities across 41 states, totaling 721 leagues and 48 sports. Woo! And counting. In 2012, 23 out athletes competed in the London Olympics. But at the 2020 Tokyo Games, a record 185 competed. How's that for progress? Where were they when I was younger? <laughs> oh my God. I do see them as a role model for the gay community that, you know, they're stepping out and they're trying to help and, and just kill that phobia. When I was young and gay, the bars all had blackened windows. Mm -hmm. right. So the fact that in the course of my lifetime, we've come so far where you can be yourself, you can kiss your husband in a bowling alley, and that's the way life should be, mm -hmm. where you can just be yourself wherever you are. We are married and we met at the Gay Softball League. We believe we're part of the community as well, even though maybe it's not one of the letters. I like to say that allyship is a verb. Definitely step back when it's time for us to speak, but always speak up for us when we can. It's a different world. And we're, we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. We keep making steps. Mm -hmm. And if we keep making steps, we'll get there. There's still a lot to learn about the intersection of LGBTQ plus people and sports. And right now, the spotlight is on the trans community. States across the country are introducing bans on trans kids participating in sports. And we have to look at the facts. Trans youth and young adults are far more likely to experience bullying, harassment, and violence than their cis peers. And nearly half have contemplated suicide. Half. So. We have to ask ourselves, will we let history run laps around us? Or will we go to the mat to change the climate that forced queer sports leagues to use code words and hide from the public? Woo! Whoa! Yeah, that's it. OK. That's how you put it through. Like how heavy is this supposed to be? If I it's 10 it is. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. <laughs> All right, which lane? so I can embarrass myself now. Whichever one! <laughs> Take out!